great looking beard. All right, we got Kevin Lee right here with Bandwagon TV's Joyride outside the, well actually you're right there, you're in Dallas, Fort Worth area. He's joining us today with Bandwagon TV's Joyride. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, what about yourself? Oh, I'm good, man, I'm spectacular. You know why, it's because the drive, and we're typically used to driving, you know, hours and days, sometimes weeks, so I'm just glad we're meeting with a, a local here in the Texas area. For people that aren't familiar with you, maybe people who are, but if you can, for our audience, explain a little bit about who you are, your musical influences, a little bit of where you're from, because you're not originally from Texas. So, um, I'm originally from Georgia. I'm about to be turning 33 here in November, so I'm a little older than your average uh, musician and at least in regards to getting a start. And, um, so I'm from a little town just west of Atlanta, uh, close to the Alabama line, Philadelphia, Georgia. Uh, lived there a lot of my life, worked there for a while, and uh, been out here in Dallas, Fort Worth area for about six years. And, and, you know, in regards to my influences, I mean, it, of course, you know, we can talk about the, the, the Johnny Cashes, the Eric Churches, the George Straits, you know, Garth Brooks. So I mean, it, it's a huge array. I would say mainly a lot of 90s country, a lot of early 2000s country. And then, you know, moving out here to Texas, getting to see the Red Dirt, getting to see, you know, the Cole Wetzels, getting to see Cody uh, Jinx, Cody Johnson, you know, those guys. I mean, it just threw a whole different mix into the way I write, the way I perform, the way, you know, the music, the style, you know, I think uh, I've kind of developed a little hybrid between, you know, good old boy Georgia country and, you know, a little bit of Red Dirt and, you know, Texas country. Yeah, and that's kind of why I wanted to bring you on. I mean, you know, doing a little bit of research and I'm looking for you know, just in terms of what you like and where you're from. And I've noticed, and just listening to your music too, you're, you're bringing a little bit of that Georgia, you, like you said, it's a good kind of point that you made, that like good old boy country, but you're, I can tell that you have the, those influences of that red dirt t Texas country music. And so I just was really intrigued and I'm glad that you're sharing that with us. I was gonna ask you just in terms of what you're doing differently, how did you, when you came and you moved to Dallas or Texas area, was it a different music scene that you had been used to? So, you know, back in Georgia, Georgia, and it's synonymous with country and country music, it is close to, to Tennessee, but I think that the thing about being in Georgia and being a musician is it is close to Tennessee. So, you know, most people don't stick around their hometown when they're three, three and a half, four hours, maybe even an hour and a half from being, you know, in Nashville. You got a lot less hometown local guys that were, you know, really, really, really into it and pursuing it, you know, actively. And I think when you get out in Texas, they kind of have their own scene. It's kind of a little more independent. You know, they've got their own sound. Some of them have no concern or want to go to Nashville, move to Nashville or do that, you know, the Nashville thing. Um, and I think that's kind of where the difference and the diversity comes in is people that specifically just love Texas country and I think that dynamic uh, between the two areas is just I, I think it, it gives a good sense from an artist standpoint of being able to figure out who you are and what you are. Yeah, I can tell too with your writing. I mean, in terms of like just the country feel of, of Texas, that I can really see it in your writing. Is that helping a lot too? I mean, being in now and being, you've been here now six years. So really, I, I would say that you're a Texan now. Are you seeing that a lot in your writing? Emulating a lot of Texans, Texas artists? Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, Cody Johnson, uh, definitely big influence. I know, you know, he writes. He also has, you know, good team writers, good group of people that he works with. You know, you got people like Pat Green. You've just got all these talented artists that relatively small. We call it small area. We know Texas, you know, maybe state you know, in the U.S., but relatively the, the music scene isn't nearly as noticeable from a, I guess, from a national level as you have, in, you know, in Nashville. With, yeah. with country where you know pop out in California you know so I think that uh, it does influence and then what I've noticed out in Texas is they don't have as many people that want to co-write you know you don't have a ton of co-writers you know you get out in Nashville and you get seven writers six seven writers on a song out in Texas most people like to do their own thing write what they write and I think it kind of forces you know the creative side of an artist to be able to be able to write a song by himself I mean I, I think I've only co-written one song my entire life and that I just find it extremely Extremely interesting, especially with people coming from outside, you know, whether it is the Georgia area, but we get, you know, people coming from even the Nashville area coming to to uh, to Texas and just explaining the different scenes. I find it really, really interesting. So thanks, Kevin Lee, for, for sharing that with us. All right, here we go. We're going to pull over the white lightning. Kevin Lee, are you ready for the lightning round? I sure hope I'm ready. <laughs> 
We're gonna take it easy. We're not gonna go too hard on you. It's been a long day already. Right now, we're currently plugging Young's Barbecue and More. It's on our website. The story about what, you know what they've dealt with and what they're you, they've overcome. It's on BandwagonTV.com. Make sure you check it out. Uh, we're doing. Uh, we're staying consistent here with small and local businesses. Uh, you know, just with independent musicians, I feel like they go hand in hand. And I love a good shout out. But Kevin Lee, I wanted you to to mention maybe a local business on your side. You got a local business that you want to plug today? You know I do, and uh, to say conflict of interest, but my so my father-in-law, my future father-in-law, actually has his own woodworking business. Um, I mean, I've never done it. And when you get me and power tools and wood together, it's not a good thing. So I get to watch him, you know, be amazed at the things he does. He'll kind of show me some stuff, as long as it's not something that the customer's going to get. But um, so uh, the name of the business is Rockin' B Woodworking. It's also uh, NDFW, uh, independently owned. He he was working a job, and, you know, he always had a passion for, you know, woodworking, and he loved it, and he just took that leap of faith, quit his job, started doing this full time, and, you know, he's doing awesome, you know, learning new techniques and stuff. So, I mean, when I watch him, it's kind of like, you know, when, when I'm writing songs and people are like, well, how did you do that? And, you know, it's kind of hard to teach it. It just kind of sometimes just comes to you, and I feel like that's how it is with him. Definitely that would be the one I'd plug shamelessly promoting him. Yeah, it sounds like you're a little biased, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, good man. You know, plug in, you know, your, your future father-in-law, uh, you know, you can't go wrong, but I appreciate that story too. Just it seems like, you know, he gave up everything to, and took a chance. And I think, you know, everybody has to appreciate that. Sure. Now we're going to get into the lightning round. I hope you're ready. Cause I'm going to start off with really just one. Like I said, this is out of left field, but I wanted to see if I was going to get a reaction out of you. you got it. All right, let's do this. All right. So you have to pick well, actually, it's it's the best of two, but I personally think they're the worst in the country. But I'm my I, I got my own opinions. The Atlanta International Airport or the Dallas Fort Worth International Airport? Who do you got? What is the better airport out of those two? Oh man, that, that's a tough one because you know they they both have their pros and cons because you know Atlanta's uh, car rental and hotel system how they got that railway is real good, real easy, you know. And then you get here in Texas, and the next thing you know, you're like driving around on a bus, and you're in the wrong area, and they dropped you off at the other airport. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, I, I would have to say, unfortunately, it's not Atlanta. It would be the or the worst airport would be Atlanta. The best one would be uh, between those two would be the DFW. Yeah. Yes, I like that. Figure out this little transport system. They're going. They're going to pass Atlanta by because Atlanta's. Security and everything is just insane. Oh man! So like, my, I think my mom would go with the Atlanta airport because she's always basing re uh, airports based on restaurants. My wife is looking at me right now and like, what are you even asking? I just, if anybody has been to either one, I'm telling you, everyone has a horror story, at least of a, a story about one of those airports. And oh, sure. yeah, and they, they just better be glad they have alcohol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, man. I appreciate that. That was kind of like, I was like, oh, what? I'm, I'm going to ask him something. This is kind of bold and refreshing. All right. Back to music. All right. All right. We're talking 90s country. All right. Alan Jackson, Georgian, or Texans own Clint Black. You know, and in this case, I'm going to have to go back with Georgia. I mean, yeah. Alan Jackson is, is a legend. Hats off to, uh, you know, Clint Black. He's a legend writing, playing, I mean, singing. He's got a bunch of, you know, just amazing songs, but I can't sell out my, my Georgia boy down there from the <laughs> community. He's just here this past weekend, Mr. Alan Jackson. Oh, yeah, man. I love them both, but Alan Jackson is just the man. Can't, can't disagree. All right, now we're driving. Actually, you've taken control. You've, you've got now behind the wheel. I'm in the bed of the truck. I, you know, don't mind me. Ignore me, actually. But we need you need a co-pilot from traveling from coast to coast, dead or alive musician, who do you got as your co-pilot? Co-pilot, um, I'm gonna have to say Willie Nelson. It, it'd be cool to, to, to surf the, the United States roadways with. I think that's a great answer. Man, the, the amount of stories he would have. Oh yeah, for sure. I can't imagine how many songs we'd end up writing. And hell no, Willie, we might not even make it to our destination. Am I driving okay? I think we're parked, man. I was gonna say, man, you might get lost depending on how much marijuana he's bringing. <laughs> 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 All 
Oh, Kevin Lee, I love it. All right. We're now going through a playlist on your phone, something that would surprise us, heck, maybe even embarrass you. You got a, a song or a band musician that we that would surprise us if we're looking through your phone on a playlist? Oh, man, you know what? I, I was actually talking, somebody asked me about music today at work, and they came to my office, we were just talking, and uh, I was telling them kind of about my music ADD bipolar disorder, uh -huh. where I, just, I go from completely one one side of the, the fence to the other when it comes to music and one a new artist that I kind of I posted about the other day and I, I discovered I say I discovered I, I'm gonna, gonna claim that one is uh Dax he's a uh, a rapper my name is Dax listen when I rap what I should is poetical I break he's like an insane rapper the lyrics are great the content's great like his message delivery is just real cool and most people and even when I told the guy today he, he didn't really expect that to come from me but just Listening to him, he's almost, I, I kind of feel like he's a, uh, a hip-hop version of me. If I was a hip-hop artist, that would probably be the message and kind of the delivery that I would uh, be bringing. Oh, I'm going to plug him. I, I, I'm not familiar, so I'm going to have to definitely listen to him. For sure. That was the lightning round. You did great. Uh, now, but this is on you. Just talking to you before this you, and checking your social media and your Instagram. You've been a busy man. You just released a kind of a snippet of what we could look forward to coming from Kevin Lee. If you don't mind, just explain what you've been up to and what we can look forward to this 2021 year. Oh, for sure. And uh, so 2020, I mean, as we all know, for musicians, especially, you know, us more independent, not, you know, not really notable artists that are out there right now. Um, 2020 was a bust for any live performances, so a lot of us, most of, and even like most of the big artists out in Nashville and here in Texas, spent it recording, writing, you know, kind of building a, a collection of songs, whether to put out little by little or put out a double or triple or quadruple album like everybody's doing now. But that was what I did. You know, I, I recorded, you know, almost, probably 10 songs. I wrote hundreds, but, you know, recorded 10 really good ones that I just really liked. It started me and my producer, Chris Marshall, tonal recording went through and started picking out which ones we were going to end up cutting and started demoing them out, um, even started pitching them to uh, some artists out there in Nashville with a publishing company that I'm working with and just grinded. And about the end of last October, November, I wrote this song and, and you know, something been on my I wanted, I knew I wanted to say something. I didn't know how to say it until one day I was driving and it just popped in my head. I wrote the song in 10, 15 minutes, went and recorded it and, uh, We've been kind of holding it, waiting to see what we're going to do, and he's been working on getting it fully mastered here the last couple months, and hopefully we'll have some out here in the next, I would say, two or three weeks. Long time coming. I'm excited about this one. You know, I've, I've put out a few songs and been played on uh, Atlanta's 94 on the Bulls on some of the countdowns. Had you know, both my songs. First song went number one on the countdown and stayed there several weeks in a row. But I think this song, if, if anyone said, you know, how would you want people to, to get to be the first song they ever heard, how would you want people to be introduced to you? And I think this would be the one that, that would kind of tell who I was, how I was, and this isn't me trying to be politically correct or anyone care about if thing ever gets played on radio. Yeah. This is for me out there that feel like I do. So how do we listen to you? How do we follow you on social media? So I've got, uh, my Instagram is uh, official underscore Kevin Lee underscore music. And then I'm also on Facebook. I have all my songs, or I'd say I've got a few songs here on, uh, you know, Apple, Spotify, any of your streaming platforms. And hopefully here in the next few months, you'll have seven or 10 more. Kevin Lee. I'm sorry, we gotta, I gotta let you go. And I hate to do this because I love hanging out in Dallas, but we're gonna have to kick you to the roadside. <laughs> oh, I got it. Other places and people to see. Not a joke. I'm hoping we can get a song from you. Is that, is that something that we can get? Is that possible? No, I, I think that's doable for sure. I'm gonna play my new single called That Ain't My Country. This, this, is, this is a first time for everything. I love it. Kevin Lee, go for it whenever you're ready. The only quicks, pops, and snaps belong on vinyl And I'll take fiddle over drum loops any day I think it's best if we leave the new age slam behind us Cause from what I hear, man, it ain't got much to say No, that ain't my country And I can't tell you what it is Looking back on where we came from, how did it turn out like this? It was full of love and music, 
Now it's more than my fame and money A bit of cash and Merle could see this world right now They'd say that ain't my country You can draw it out if you want to paint a picture Use words like wreck and shine y'all And just because you drive a truck on 35 lift it up You think you're a good old boy a slow down house Cause that ain't my country And I can't tell you what it is Looking back on where we came from How did it turn out like this It was for the love and music now it's more than my fame and money A bit of cash and Merle could see this world right now They'd say that ain't my country Well I'm all for evolving to make a change But let's call it what it is, not what it ain't Cause that ain't my country Oh, it ain't Jones or Strait Just a bunch of hip-hop cowboys Bound to ride out any day There's no meaning in the news The fact that some don't sing is funny A bit of cash and Merle could see this world right now Well, hell, they'd probably do if you turned to the ground And say that ain't my country That ain't my country. There you go. That's Kevin Lee. This is a new single. He's. I'm just excited as much as he is to get this out. Thanks again for playing that for us, Kevin. We all appreciate it here with Bandwagon TV. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It means a lot. And thanks for everything you do for, for me and, you know, artists like me. Since you are a Georgian really at heart, go dogs. Go dogs. <laughs> All right, Kevin Lee, have a good one, stay safe, and we hope to see you soon. This could be our lucky day. Oh, yeah, you might take a picture, love. This could be our lucky day.